Bernice, thank you. <laughs> this is going to be pretty funny. Okay. Thesis number two. Thesis number two is, what is this public sociology? Well, there is no public sociology. There are public sociologists, I-E-S. Conventionally, we think of public sociology as the sociologist who writes a great book, best-selling book, read by audiences beyond the academy. Alex de Tocqueville, Democracy in America, W.B. Du Bois, Souls of Black Folk, Gunnar Myrdal, American Dilemma, David Reisman, The Lonely Crowd, Robert Bella et al., Habits of the Heart, and if I may, Barbara Ehrenreich, Nickel and Dimed, Honorary Sociologist. <laughs> so yes, that is one form, traditional form of public sociology. Writing an op-ed piece for the New York Times, damn difficult. That's another project. But my insist there is another type of public sociology. There are many other types, but there is another ideal type, what I call the organic public sociologist, less visible. It is the public sociologist who engages directly with communities, with neighborhood associations, with communities of faith. Project South is a good example of the organic public sociology. Students at the University of California, Berkeley, graduate students, have just produced a document, a piece of public sociology called Berkeley's Betrayal, about the conditions of work on the Berkeley campus. That is another example, a collective project. But there are many such projects. They're all over the place. I discovered that as I went around the country, that there's so much, but we do not see it. These organic public sociologists, to be sure the publics are local, but they're also thicker. They're also more active than the readership, for example, of the New York Times. My argument is we need both traditional and organic public sociologists, that they are in a synergic relationship with one another. There are many publics and many public sociologists. But you will say to me, there really are no publics. That's what some of us are being told, that publics are disappearing. Well, the great thing is that because publics are disappearing, it's important to recognize their multiplicity. Political scientists in particular are particularly worried about the disappearance of publics, and indeed, they should be, and we should all be. And if indeed they are disappearing, then we have to think again. We can have to create publics. That's what we do as sociologists. We create these categories, and those categories have a life of their own. Or we have... We are, Publics are always being created, if not by sociologists, by social movements. The feminist movement created a public. It's called women. <laughs> so there's another project, creating publics if we have no publics. But we do have publics. We have labor movements. We have community organizations. There are publics. But still, if it really is bad out there, then another approach is to say, well, if there are no publics, then we have to constitute ourselves as a public. A professional association, they are very strong in this country. They are part of civil society. Perhaps there's no reason why we shouldn't become a public unto ourselves, a participant in the democratic process. Ah, yes, that's controversial. This is a unity speech. Let me move on to something less controversial. <laughs> I noticed the silence. I, can, I can't see your faces, but I felt the silence. <laughs> there is one public that will not disappear before we disappear, and those are who? Our students. They are our first public. They are not empty vessels in which we pour pearls of wisdom. They come to us rich with lived experience, and our role is to take that lived experience and locate it in its broader context. That's what we do as sociologists, to locate. And in that process, we ourselves become educated through that interaction with our students. They then understand their own locus in the world. They begin to actually become the ambassadors, if we are lucky, 
of sociology. Sometimes, of course, we don't always do our job as we would like, and they are negative ambassadors. <laughs> But they are, in my view, our first public. But I do want to stress once again that I do not consider, when we're talking about public sociologists, it does not have a singular normative value. There are different public sociologists based on different values. Yes, it is true that sociologists may sort of hover around a particular place on the political spectrum, but we are a very diverse group. There were not, there were one third of our membership did not endorse the resolution against Vietnam, and we must encourage debate about this matter and not be silenced. Hmm? Thank you very much. <laughs> You're doing great down there. Do you want to come up here? <laughs> Thanks very much. See, that's right. We mustn't be silenced. Help me out. <laughs> Now, yes. So that's my second thesis: the multiplicity of public sociologists. And I want to validate all that public sociology that is going on. But it's not enough to validate it; it has to be brought into the discipline of sociology. We have to think of public sociology's relationship to the rest of the discipline. It is not what a very distinguished sociologist told me: charity work. It is not. It is public sociology, that invisible sociology that must be made visible. The private sociology must be made public. So, what then? Ah, is the relation of public sociology to the rest of the discipline? I want to make a distinction first between public sociology and policy sociology. All right, it's controversial. Doesn't matter. Public sociology involves a dialogue between the sociologist and various publics. Policy sociology, in fact, what it does is essentially is accept a definition of a problem of a client. And engages in the solution of that problem. In the solution of that problem, and often there's a contractual relationship in which money is exchanged for expertise. Public sociology is much more a conversation between sociologist and public. The distinction might be between public sociology. Well, you might think, shall we just mention Barbara Ehrenreich, Nick? Nickel and dime. That's public sociology, sort of displaying the relations. For example, at Walmart, whereas Bill Bilby's excellent work in the Walmart, in the case against Walmart, the anti-discrimination case, that's a case of more policy sociology. They work together. Another wonderful case I particularly like is Diane Vaughan's work on the. Challenger disaster, and then the Columbia disaster. She wrote a book on the Challenger disaster. Many of you may know. Challenger disaster was 1985. She wrote the book in, came out in 1996. It was basically an argument that an organization like NASA was so complex, technologically advanced, an argument made by Chick Perot also, so advanced that these sorts of accidents are likely to happen. She talks about the way that deviance gets normalized in these organizations, particularly in NASA. And at the end of the book, predicted yes that there would be another disaster. And what her book became actually a quite celebrated book. It was well reviewed in the press. It became an art, you might say, public sociology. But one entity never made any reference to it, and that was NASA. Silence. And then in 2000. And three, February first, is that right? <laughs> okay. Okay, very good.、Um, there was the Columbia disaster, and so she became the source of an intense engagement with the media. I followed what she was doing. I was an ethnographer of her, and she, for several months, was engaging daily, spending hours with the press. All press, radio, television, journalists. There was a mutual education going on. She spent hours. They were telling her about the details of the Columbia disaster, and she was describing and explaining and analyzing it in sociological terms. 
And so she was almost every day in the press. And then the Columbia Accident Investigation Board got, got hold of all this. And they thought, hmm, this is very interesting. So she was asked to present her ideas to that board in Texas. And she went there, and they were converted. An instant conversion to sociology. <laughs> and if you look at the Columbia Accident Investigation Board, her name will appear nowhere. But the actual report is Diane Vaughan. It's pure Diane Vaughan. There are several chapters that she, of course, wrote. And it is, of course, an indictment of the culture of NASA. And NASA had to respond. And it is interesting, a footnote, that the Admiral, who was the head of the Columbia Accident, Accident Investigation Report, he said, Ah, oh, why did nobody teach me more sociology when I was an undergraduate? LAUGHTER